What's going on YouTube? Kevin here with a video just to let you guys know what happened today on Wednesday, September 12th with the iPod lineup that Apple just recently updated from pretty much the ground up. They updated pretty much every single iPod on the line with the exception of the iPod Shuffle. That kind of remained the same, not much happening with that. But what's really interesting is what they did with the iPod Nano. This probably went the greatest underwent the greatest change of the whole iPod line. And well, you know the iPod the iPod Nano 6th generation, it's this little square thing that's about this big and you know, it's supposed to be really small, but Apple kind of changed that. They kind of took an iron to it and pancaked it out. And now it has a much taller form factor. It resembles a, a mini iPod Touch or the iPod Mini in the kind of shape and form, but it's incredibly thin. I believe this thing is like, it's either 5.6 or 6.1. I can't remember what it is. Um, I believe this is what, it's 5.4 millimeters thin, which is crazy thin, okay? And that's just so ridiculous, okay? Don't know how, it's just crazy. But it's incredibly thin, incredibly light too. And also with the Nano, what has improved or what has changed is the fact that it now has a home button and it now has a 2.5 inch multi-touch screen. So it's that little square you get, you get a home button and you also get a multi-touch screen. So that's very nice that they're kind of bringing the iOS feel from the iPod Touch and the iPhone and the iPad to the iPod Nano. Now, what this also has also has an FM tuner, which is kind of you know the same as what all the other iPod Nanos have. It does have DVR functionality, so you do have the play, pause, rewind in live time thing. It comes available in seven colors, which you guys can see here. I'm not gonna list them all, but this is what it looks like. It looks all right to me. I'm not a huge fan of the color scheme aside from the classic black or white silver kind of thing, but that's that. It is nice that they do have those color options. It does have Bluetooth 4.0, so you can finally use it to stream to your wireless audio accessories, whether it be a speaker, your headphones, or your car, or something like that. So it's pretty interesting that they include that, but they don't include Wi-Fi, which is something that I find a little bit odd. But maybe in the next generation now they'll have Wi-Fi, and you can download songs from iTunes, let's say, or you can just do whatever you want. So that is pretty much what's new with the iPod Nano. I think it's a pretty interesting kind of thing, and it does look really attractive, but I really want to get my hands on one, even though I don't really need it. But that is the coverage of the iPod Nano. Now, the iPod Touch also underwent a decent amount of change, and the thing that you guys should be expecting, it does have a four inch uh, LCD retina display. So no, no big surprise there. Well, I predicted yesterday what rooms have leaked out, and that's that. It does have the same 16 by nine resolution as the iPhone 5, and it does have the A5 chip, just like the iPhone 4S, and just like how I predicted yesterday. So nothing new on that front. What is new is this. This is a picture of the camera that's on the back of the new iPod Touch 5. And what is so different about this? Well, it's freaking huge, first of all. It just like stares at you right in the eye. And this is a five megapixel eyesight camera, so you will be getting a pretty significant jump in quality from the iPod Touch 4 to the iPod Touch 5. And what is also very good about this is it now has autofocus. So instead of just auto exposure and kind of hoping that you're getting the right focus, you now can autofocus it. So it's pretty awesome with that. It also does have a maximum aperture of f2.4, so you will get some nice shallow depth of field and you also get a decent amount of light into the sensor, which by the way is a backside illuminated sensor. So you will get some good quality pictures with that. And included, you also have an LED flash, which was something not present before in the iPod Touch 4. Also, dealing with the camera, we do have 1080p HD video with improved image stabilization or shakingness, and that's probably with the help of the A5 chip that is now embedded into the iPod Touch 5. The front-facing camera, the FaceTime camera, is now 720p HD video, just like the iPhone 5, and so you can now Skype with your friends, FaceTime with your friends in 720p HD, so that's pretty stellar. The iPod Touch 5 is also incredibly thin. It is 6.1 millimeters thin, which is still pretty darn impressive. I'm really surprised that Apple's able to jam all this technology, especially the camera, into a package this small. So now while you're looking at the back, you might be thinking, what the heck is this, okay? This is actually what they call the iPod Touch Loop, okay? It's actually a button. It's kind of like a tractable button. You push on it, it comes out, and you essentially are able to hook on a wrist strap or some type of lanyard that comes with the iPod, or you can buy it. Um, it's kind of a wrist strap. So if you're you know, taking photos, if you're shooting video, you won't drop your iPod, which is really weird. Like, they don't have that on the iPhone, so I'm not sure why they would put it on, like, the iPod, but that's just that. And one thing you might also notice is the brushed metal back. I cannot tell you how happy I am, even though I'm probably not getting one, to have a brushed metal back iPod Touch. Now, when I first got my iPod Touch, which was the first gen, way back in 2007, I believe, it had a chrome backing, shiny metal, and iPods are kind of, like, notorious for the, how easy they scratch up on the back. Well, Apple's fixed this now with the, you know, brushed metal back that was present on the first generation iPhone, the original iPhone. And now they brought that to the iPod Touch 5, which is a huge relief. You shouldn't have to worry about getting your iPod scratched up as much anyway. And you probably won't need really, like, 
hefty screen shields, at least on the back, to prevent scratches. So that should be very nice. The one thing that's not so great about this iPod Touch is the fact that the colors are really weird. Now it does have the traditional black and white, which I'm okay with, but they have this really weird yellow, red, and light blue, which you can see here. And it's just not a really pleasant looking kind of color scheme. It's kind of clashing. I'm not really a huge fan with that. So one thing I almost forgot to mention is the fact that iPod Touch 5 now has Siri in it. So a lot of people who have been asking for Siri on their iPod Touches and have actually jailbroken their iPods for this feature now do not have to do that. It is now built into the iPod Touch 5. Whether or not that will come to the iPhone 4, I'm going to say no. And the reason is because, well, the iPhone 4 has the A4 chip and it's not the A5 chip that has dual cores in it. And Siri does need the A5 chip for it to work. Of course, you might think, hey, I jailbroke my iPhone, my iPod, and it works just fine. But yeah, Apple prefers not to have it. So now the iPod Touch 5 does have Siri. However, I think this is kind of stupid because if you ever try to use Siri on your phone or your iPad without a connection, you get this. Siri not available. Connect to the internet. Siri tells you, hey, I need internet for this thing to work. And if you're on iPod Touch, you know, you obviously don't have connection to the data services. You don't have internet wherever you go. So you only can really use it when you're on Wi-Fi, which is, you know, maybe in restaurants, maybe in the mall maybe, well, obviously when you're at home, but it's not gonna get you very far. I mean, like, the basic things that you don't need internet for, like, if you wanna tell Siri, hey, set an alarm for, like, half an hour, or you want to say, you know, make a note that I ate this for lunch today, if you're the type of person that does that. Small things like that, that don't need data, that, are, that can be done localized on the phone, you can't do that on iPod Touch if you're, say, at the mall. So let's say you know you're gonna be somewhere in half an hour, say, you know, and set a timer for half an hour. I can't even do that. I can't say, you can't do reminders. On the, under that like kind of circumstance, which is really weird, but you know I, I think Apple just threw this in just to be a uh, crowd pleaser because everyone wanted it and they say hey you know you put this on the iPhone 4s it has an A5 chip why can't you do it on the iPod Touch now that it has an A5 chip too? Well Apple did put it in now and it is there. However I think it's going to be very splotchy and it's going to have a lot of mixed results. But just let you guys know the iPod Touch 5 now does have Siri built into it. This is the quick wrap up of what happened today on Wednesday, September 12th with Apple and the updated iPod line. Now here you see a picture of all the pricing of the current lineup for all of the iPods here. And the interesting thing is Apple is going to keep the iPod Touch 4 in line. So I was kind of wrong when they said they wouldn't have two tiers of iPods, but we have the iPod Shuffle 2 gigabytes at $49. We have the new iPod Nana at 16 gigabytes at $149. We have the iPod Touch 4, which is last generation. Still a great iPod. 16 gigabytes for $200, 32 for 250 and the brand new iPod Touch, the iPod Touch 5, or at least that's what I'm calling it, 32 gigabytes and $300 and 64 gigabytes for $400. So that is the price you pay for the current iPod lineup. Hope you enjoyed this video, this wraps it up, and I will see you guys in the next video. Please feel free to rate, comment, and subscribe. Until then, we'll see you guys next Tech Day.